Hello. And you may notice I'm not wearing my signature shirt. It's the weekend and I'm just sort of hanging out wearing a t-shirt and figured I would do a little bit of my video here. And today I think what I'm going to talk about is um, a little bit of history. Sort of coming up with stuff on the fly. This 90 day video thing is uh, still not quite what I understand how to do. I'm just not ready with scripts and plans and all that. Uh, you hear some pounding in the background. We've got uh, a house being built to a, by us next door and uh, they're doing a fence, luckily, between our two properties. That's going pretty well. But uh, let's see, about me. Um, I usually start talks when I do uh, training or anything like that, kind of public speaking. Um, first charts, pretty much, you know, who is Brad and why do you care? So, um, I tailor that to what I'm talking about. So it's easy to do the, you know, who am I and, you know, why do you care about what I'm going to say? And I'll talk about my history and my experience in that particular area that I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about social media or if I'm talking about affiliate programs, I'll just talk about that. But, um, I've got a whole video here and there's no time limit really, although I like to keep these in the five minute range. My first few I was great. After that, I've been at like nine or ten minutes. Hopefully you're not getting too bored. Um, I'm not going to go all the way back to the beginning, but I'm a native Californian. I have a degree in physics from MIT. Uh, lived in Boston for five years for going to school. Came back out to California. I was an infrared system engineer working in the aerospace industry, and I can't talk anything about the stuff that I did there. But um, I worked for Hughes, which was bought by Raytheon, um, worked with many contractors, worked with government agencies, things like that. Over the years, um, have got a, uh, or used to have, uh, various um, clearances. Switching hands on my phone here. I still haven't figured out the best way to uh, do this. I really need a tripod mount or something like that so I can just talk to the mount and not have to worry about holding the phone, so, um, whatever. Um, during the uh, years in aerospace, um, I learned a lot about uh, marketing, actually. Um, I did a lot of the new business development and learned a little bit about that. And then in um, 1994, uh, my now business partners had come up with an idea for online classifieds. This was before pretty much anybody had a website out there. Um, came up with a uh, an idea, website, got a domain back in 1993-94 time frame, maybe up to 95 sometime. If you wanted a domain, you wrote to Network Solutions and said, this is what I want, and if it was available, they gave it to you. So our first domain we got was ep.com. And then about a year later, um, it was $50 a year for the domain. And so we, you know, we were thinking, oh, we'll get like dozens and dozens of domains. And it's like, ah, it's just not worth it. That's just too much money to spend on stuff that, you know, maybe we would use, maybe we wouldn't. Um, who knows how much money we would have today if we had bought all those generic domain names that we had been talking about. But you never know. Um, so... It was 1994, we had ep.com, and it was online classifieds. And the reason behind that was we wanted to do something commercial, online, find a way to make money, but not have it be too much work. Because, you know, we had talked about doing Yellow Pages, but Yellow Pages is all outreach. All you're doing is making phone calls and getting people to get a listing and all that, and we'd be competing with the existing Yellow Pages that are doing that already. So that idea was just too much work. The online classifieds, however, is what today everybody calls user-generated content. And so by doing classifieds, we create the database, we create the hierarchy, we create the system, and then all we have to do is, at that point, kind of wait for people to show up and give us content. There's a little more than that because you actually have to let them know that you exist and get the content and manage it and do customer service and emails. 
So a lot of what I was doing back in those early days was making phone calls and answering emails of people who were interested, had questions, you know, what do I get, that kind of thing. Um, and back then, people were creating personal websites. Today we call them blogs, but back then it was a, just a personal website. And they would create a page on their website and it, they'd say, email me and I will list your whatever for sale that relates to my website. I'll list it for sale for 30 days. And at the end of 30 days, I'm going to just delete the listing. You know, I've just got a running list. And I update it every couple of days and they, they do that. We looked at that and said, how do we grow our classifieds? The best way to do that was to become our own competition. Let's offer all of these websites their own free single subject classifieds. So if you've got a site on VW Westphalias, you want to have VW Westphalia classifieds, you got it. Corvettes, Corvette classifieds. RCA laser discs, you get RCA laser disc classifieds. I'm mentioning those because those are actually a few of our first ever sites that we created for people. The um, RCA, um, what was it called? CEDmagic.com. Check it out. I bet you they're still there. They are our first affiliate. We didn't know to call them affiliates back then. We just called them uh, partners, I think. Um, we created an, a, uh, an acronym, CSP, for class. We became a classified service provider, and these were your CSP site. So uh, this uh, this was our first person that uh, we basically said, "We'll give you thirty percent of all the revenue you bring in," and. Yeah, you know, it'll come through your site, and you well, know, it's win-win. You get classified, you get content. People coming back more often because it's always changing. We get content, and if they pay any money, we'll share it back with you. Seems fair. Well, that turned into an affiliate program when uh, it was popularized by Amazon. Uh, sometime later that year, I think, is when they came out with their program. Um, through that, I ended up doing a lot of speaking and training on affiliate programs, how to set up affiliate programs. So in 1998, 1999, I was traveling around the country giving these three-hour workshops on what an affiliate program is, why you need one, how you set it up, who the software providers are, how you might do that, how much it might cost. There's you know, a whole, whole big thing. Um, I dealt with small companies, big companies, you know, you, you name it. Um, I remember um, one company in, in particular that, uh, you know, came to the talk and said, this is all great, but, you know, we could never do that because we would never um, let customers be, a, you know, do anything with our brand. Our brand is just is, is too important. We couldn't let them do that. Well, about two years later, they had an affiliate program. Um, so during that, I met some of the people that are uh, early involved in the affiliate industry, and uh, there were other shows. Uh, There's one called Affiliate Force, uh, and through that I ended up meeting Sean and Missy, who created Affiliate Summit, which is the t-shirt that I actually happen to be wearing today. Um, but the, uh, so I, I spoke at many of those conferences, I've been attending those conferences for years, know all the people there. Um, back, you know, it was Commission Junction, Be Free, Link Share, um, there's been a bit of uh, consolidation so you know people have been bought but um, you know I know a lot of the early people from those days because we were you know on a cruise together or in a show together or speaking together um, so that was a lot of fun um, and we're still involved in that it's just not as busy um, in the late 90s as well we also had an idea for an advertising management service um, I was managing all the banner ads on our site and the way it worked was somebody would want to take out an ad and I would have to go and get the order and talk to my programmers and get them to edit the page and it was just a lot of work. So what they did was they created a way for me to have basically slots and I had, I had 10 slots on each page type that we had and if I got an order I could say, oh, you want to have... 25, or actually that doesn't work. <laughs> you want to have 30% of our inventory, I'll give you three slots on this page. 
And so I was then able to manage all the display advertising on our site. We looked at it and I said, hey, what about doing this for other people? If we were able to get remnant advertising that we had, which was basically affiliate ads and their other display ad networks that we could show content from, we could say, put this code on your site, you will have automatic advertising, you'll have something there, we'll do a revenue share with you, and there'll be a link at the bottom of every ad that lets somebody just buy that space. And um, it was, you know, I think it was a great idea, and it was going pretty well, and we were starting to actually shop it around to venture capital, and then the bubble burst. It was the first of the dot-com bubble bursting, and nobody wanted to invest in it anymore. Um, we didn't have that much time to really put into it. We didn't have that much money to you know, advertise it and get it out there. And by the time things turned around and it was starting to work better, Google came out with AdSense, and people just gravitated towards that. So um, that business uh, went from serving 300 million ads a day down to a couple million ads a day. 